following development. Liam, tell us. Grim news here from Port Talbot, Britain's biggest steel plant. They've been making steel in the plant behind me since before 1900. You can see behind me the two blast furnaces which are now to be closed down. Two of only four working blast furnaces in the UK. The other two, of course, also controlled by Tata at their steelworks in Scunthorpe in Lincolnshire. Tata have made this announcement, as you say, 4,000 steel workers here in Port Talbot, Britain's biggest steel plant, 2,800 jobs to be lost, the lion's share of them here in Port Talbot, we suspect around 2,500, the others in other Tata sites, possibly to be confirmed, Hartlepool, Shotton, Wolverhampton, Corby, we're not yet sure, but to get more on this, I'm joined now here on GB News with Peter Hughes. Peter is the leader of the Welsh branch of the Unite Union. Peter, a sad day. A very sad day. It's a sad day for the steel industry and it's a sad day for Wales. Like you said, this plant's been producing steel for over 100 years. It's the lifeblood of the community around here and to make 2,500 people redundant from here is devastated. What's actually at stake here is the blast furnaces behind us are being shut down because they emit lots of carbon. We're moving away from the creation of virgin steel using coking coal to arc furnaces. What's the difference between these two processes? And in your view, why is virgin steel made using blast furnaces so important? The, the, when you produce virgin steel, it's a better quality of steel. Everybody knows that. That's why these two blast furnaces are here. You're quite right, they're closing because of decarbonisation, but they don't need to decarbonise until 2034. So this is a very rash decision. In fact, I believe it's vandalism. Because when you're making it virgin steel, which produces and, and makes better class of steel, and then you put an electric arc furnace in there, that would, make, that would help grow the steel industry with, in the UK. The United's done a study. The industry is going to grow. The need for steel is going to grow for, by 25% in the next 10 years. We need to be at the forefront of that, whereas Tata have made the decision to cut all that off. When them two blast furnaces, if them two blast furnaces close, because United will fight for them, when, if they close, that will mean like you said, two and a half thousand people are done, but it will also mean when you build an electric arc furnace, that's going to take five years to build. So for the next five years, you're going to be bringing steel in from India. And you're telling me that's green? But from all the way across the other side of the world, made exactly the same way as they're made here, all Tata are doing is moving their emissions to India and not here. Indeed, when we make virgin steel, we can make it out of iron ore. We can make it within the British Isles. It's strategically our steel. We are now going to be, aren't we, Peter Hughes, the only country in the G7, the only advanced industrialised country, the only country in the G20 that can't make virgin steel at a time when we're going to be reliant on steel imports through the Red Sea from China and India. And what's going on in the Red Sea? Well, it's ridiculous. You look what's happening in the Red Sea now. The steel's going to be made in India. It's going to go through the Suez Canal, which is protected by the UK. By the UK. As we speak. So that's going to be coming through there. Steel's going to be coming here to make warships to go back and to protect the, the supply chain. It's, uh, it's crazy. And, but if you then take it through the, around the Cape, that adds £3 million to that shipping. So it's, it's a crazy decision by Tata. It's a naive decision by Tata. That, that number four blast furnace should be kept open until the end of life, which is 2032. The plan is it should be kept open until 2032, and we're producing electric arc steel in 2029, and then ramp up and make something else. Yeah, if that carbon emission is wrong, fine. But close it down at the end of life, and then put something in then which isn't carbon. Now, Rishi Sunak's government has given Tata, of course, a huge Indian multinational conglomerate, half a billion pounds, 500 million pounds, in order to uh, in order to help them finance the closing of those blast furnaces and the creation of those arc furnaces. Uh, Tata say that they're putting in about two billion pounds. There's lots of money at stake. What do you think of the Tory party's judgment? What do you think when you hear the Tory Welsh leader, David T.C. Davis, saying that his heart goes out to the local community here in Port Talbot, who have literally been making steel here for four generations. It's ridiculous. When has a government ever given half a billion pounds to make two and, two and a half thousand people redundant? That, most of that will go on redundancy pay. It's ridiculous. It's an absolute sham. Any good government that gives someone else money for, for making people redundant, it's bizarre. It's the most bizarre decision ever. 
when you're giving, there should be guarantees. If your government's giving people money, it should be, yeah, to make better steel, yeah, to employ people. Therefore, the whole community, the whole, in, yeah, everywhere around the South Wales Valleys will benefit from it. What they've done is give people money to make other people redundant. It's a farce. You know, Peter Hughes, the Unite Union knows what's really going on here is a kind of clash of cultures. It's almost a clash of civilizations. You have a largely urban um, group of voters, an urban-based political and media class who seem to put environmental imperatives above absolutely everything. And we have another part of the UK in the Red Wall here in South Wales, the Midlands, the North East, Scotland, where steel is made, where our manufacturing heartlands are. And while they want a cleaner world for their kids and grandkids, they think, don't they, that this environmental imperative, the costs are falling disproportionately on them. Correct. And it's all about the Red Wall voters. There's an election coming up in October. It's about what, what did they want for their future generations. Like I said, people have worked here for 100 years, family upon family upon family. So we've got to protect that. We need that to grow. And, and part of that is the Red Wall seats. The Red Wall seats here, Sheffield, Scunthorpe, anywhere else, we should be saying to the MPs there, are you going to support us? Are you going to make steel a priority? What the Labour government, the Labour Party have said, they want to invest £3 billion. Why then the chatter want to potentially close the blast furnace in October when there potentially could be an election in November, which could then go into the new year, and there's £3 billion available for the steel industry? It doesn't make sense. But Labour have got a problem as well, haven't they? Because Labour, Labour have got their sort of urban, professional, trendy voters, if you like, who are, you know, greener than green. For them, environmentalism is everything. And yet Labour have also got their heartland constituencies, you know, backed by the likes of the Unite Union with huge respect. How can Labour square that circle? Manufacturing heartlands on the one hand, environmental imperatives on the other. I want to talk about manufacturing. My members are in manufacturing. I care about manufacturing. I was from the steel industry myself. That's what I want to make sure this place that survives, because that's ultimately what we want. And if Labour are going to give three billion pounds in the new year, if they get in, and you know what I mean, if you're a better man, you say they get in. So what? So why then are this company making a decision to close number four blast furnace at the end of the year when it could be kept open and future funding could be there for it? It's crazy. It's as if Tata have made their decision and it's made in a boardroom in India not actually in the grasslands and on the heart of we're going to be importing steel for the next five years it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous what the plan is and it isn't a plan it's actually like i've said vandalism you're a hugely knowledgeable uh, former steel worker if i may say so peter let's just drill in in the last couple of minutes to the details the blast furnaces behind us do use coking coal that emits lots of carbon if we import steel there's carbon embodied in that steel because that's used coking coal in other countries and then there's the carbon emissions from the diesel in the freight ships that transport it these arc furnaces it can they produce virgin steel or if not can you use blast furnaces with something apart from dirty coking coal yeah you can you can make the dris which is a different way of hydrogen and everything else which is which direct why aren't we doing that i think that's what that's what they should be investing in that is the next step that's you know you like if you built an electric arc furnace and a dri or, or or something similar that would that would alleviate all the problems they're talking about but when you say about the carbon emissions it's not until 2034 or late 2040. Why are they making a decision to do it now? It's purely a financial decision. It's nothing to do about being going greener. But if it's doing about going greener, the electric arc would be running before they close them furnaces. Peter Hughes, may I ask you this finally? What do you think when you see politicians around the world clamouring to be photographed with Greta Thunberg? Well, it... it We've all got we've all got a duty to be greener. Let's be honest. You know I mean we've all got children and children, our children soon, we, and the future is green. But there's no reason why this couldn't be the the green capital of European steel. Let's be proud of it. This should be the green capital of Europe, making steel which we export to Europe. We don't want to be a net importer because that's an absolutely crazy situation to be in. And with, it, with it, the demands then of third world countries, you might not want to supply us but spending money on technology, not redundancies. Correct. That's what the money should be spent on. Peter Hughes, the, uh, the Welsh leader of the Union Unite. As you can hear, passions are running incredibly high here in Port Talbot. 2,800 jobs are to be lost. The blast furnaces behind me, along with those in Scunthorpe, are to close. 
the end of an era, the end here of a proud steelmaking community in Port Talbot. Thank you very much indeed, Liam, for bringing us that interview. Fantastic stuff to hear from Peter Hughes there from the union there. He, um, well, a very good point that £500 million from the government, most of it to go on redundancy payments yeah. likely, or at least a large chunk. But also, Does that uh, make any sense? I think, I think both of us uh, really quite enjoyed that final question from Liam, Liam Halligan yes. there. Are our leaders paying too much attention to a Swedish former schoolgirl? He wasn't quite drawn on it, but we got a gist <laughs> there, we got a gist. Um, but coming up, conspicuous silence.